In this video series, I will show you how to use Autodesk Inventor to design these two parts using a CAM program, CAMBAM, to apply machining operations to create the cutting profiles and drills to fabricate these two parts on the Green Bull CNC machine. During the Inventor portion of the video series, you'll learn a ton of advanced topics, including using properties from parts of the assembly to provide dimensions for a particular part, or using Excel to provide the dimensions you need so the assembly and parts are fully parametric. These videos can also serve as a good primer if you are deciding to get into using Inventor for your projects. All right, we're gonna make a Z-axis assembly for the blue chick uh, to hold the 890, the port cable 890. Right. We're gonna go with an assembly first, I think. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to create something. So we don't have anything on this assembly yet. So we got to create something. We'll create our, let's say, our um, back mount or the uh, the back part of the mount because we're gonna have a we're gonna have a back, and then we're gonna have the actual mounts. So um, the axis back. We'll call it that. Press OK. And we're gonna place it somewhere on the screen. And now we are faced with a blank screen. You're probably going to be completely confused at this point. So let's, we have to go here and start a 2D sketch because we got nothing. So let's start a 2D sketch and you can pick whatever plane. I don't really um, have any, for the first part, it doesn't really matter what plane I'm going to be using because I can always rotate it and do whatever I need when I'm doing my constraints. So I'm going to, intuitively, I, I want to do it on this plane. So I'm going to do that. Now you're on that plane. You, you may not look like it, but you are. So let's, um, we'll make a rectangle. And that's going to be our back from, uh, for now. Um, I think we should constrain it or we should make it the size of the actual back of where the rails are going to be. So um, I don't know what that number is. So I'm just going to, for right now, I'll just put Two inches sounds right to me. You can see it got really big. And this one, not really sure, but I'll just keep it at, let's say four, let's say six inches. Not sure what that's gonna be either. And you can see that it's all green. That means it's not fully constrained. It doesn't really need to be fully constrained. Because I can um, press escape so I can get out of the dimension. I can go over here and I can start moving it. You can see that it moves, but it stays the same shape, but it moves off of the origin. I can constrain it to the origin if I want. I can say from here to the origin. And now you'll notice that there is a blue line here, meaning that I can't go up and down. That is set in stone, it's concrete. So if I um, escape my dimension, you'll see that I'm able to move it this way but I'm not able to move it this way anymore because I've constrained it to my origin. So let's go ahead and just constrain it just for kicks, constrain it to this one too. And now you'll see that the whole thing is blue. So now I, it is concrete. Now I've made my sketch. This is all I really want to do with it right now because I don't know what I want to do with it. Uh, so I'm generally just blocking things out. So I'm going to um, extrude it. So I'm going to use the E key, and then you'll see that um, it's being extruded, um, the face is being extruded out. I can extrude this in many different ways. Uh, I can do it by, um, what is it, let's see, oh yeah, I can do it like as uh, asymmetrical, symmetrical, and in one direction or the other direction. Right now I think I'm on this direction. If I do it this way, it'll go the, in the back. So I'm just going to go back to the, to the front here. And I want it to be the thickness of my wood, so I'm going to make it 0.75. So that should be 0.75. It doesn't look like it, though, does it? So what we can do is we can take a look at the, the extrude, and it looks like it's one inch. I don't know why I didn't accept it, so I'm just going to put 0.75. So that's better. Okay, I just plugged in my, my 3D mouse here. 
so I can look at it different sides. Okay, so now we have the back. So now what we want to do is we want to create some mounts. All right, so let's block those out as well. So let's go ahead and start a new, or actually, we are done with this one, so I'm going to return. And this, what this does is it takes it out of this part. Because right now we're in it. I didn't have the browser on here, so I'm going to put the browser in. All right, now I'm going to, um, now I'm outside of the, this back part here. I'm going to put something protruding off of it because that's what would be holding the, the router. So, you know, I actually like to see this in perspective. So I'm going to go over here, press that little down arrow, and I'm going to perspective with ortho faces, which means if I go into a, a side or, or a sketch, it'll become ortho again. All right, so I'm going to create another part. This will be, let's say, middle router mount. I know I'm going to have three mounts, or actually two. Let's do this top mount. Press OK. All right, now I'm going to place it right on this section here. I'm going to do, I'm going to start a new sketch. And I'll probably do it on this plane because I want it to be um, off of this plane, off of uh, sort of sticking out. So this will be my um, my face. I'm going to make a rectangle. Actually, I may not want to make a rectangle. I probably want to make a circle. So let's start with the circle that is the size of the router. And that's going to be, use a dimension. It's going to be 3.5 inches. I guess it's already in inches, so yeah. All right, you can see I can also start sketching even in this form here. So the outside, I'm going to want probably to be a little bit, I'm going to want it to be constrained from from here, but let's do another circle. I'll draw it from the center. It should be constrained by the center, so I'm going to do a dimension between this one and this one. And this is going to be 0.75 inches. Oh, I did the inches again, 0.75. <coughs> All right, now I'm going to want to have a cut in. So I'm going to draw a line. This can be a construction line, actually. So I go over here, press the construction line. It's going to be off of the center. And this is where it's going to have an opening so I can squeeze down a clamp it'll be the sort of the clamping area to clamp down the the router and I'm going to draw a couple real lines without the construction line and I'm just gonna draw one here draw one here I'm pressing enter after each one and I'm going to draw another one. It's going to do this. So I'm going to draw another one here. And draw another one here. Okay, so it's sort of working here. And they're all. Um, I'm going to have to close this all up too. So I'm going to close. I have to draw a line from here to here. I'm draw a line from here to here. And now we're going to create constraints <clears throat> um, and using the dimension and using also the constraints buttons so right now I'm going to try I'm going to use the, the constraints I'm going to constrain it from this line here it says 0.25 I'm going to put 0.125 an eighth of an inch Do the same thing here it's already set Adding a dimension will over constrain the sketch to, okay, because something, this is already symmetrical for some reason. I don't know why, that's weird. Well, let's keep going and see why. Um, this one is a constraint, so this can be aligned. 
So I'm going to constrain these two. So now they're <clears throat> a line. They may not be perpendicular to another line, but we can do that as well. Let's see, where is the perpendicular is here? So I want this one to be perpendicular to that. So now they're both perpendicular. So that's what we want. <clears throat> 